Hey everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of the Scratch the Track Podcast presented by the Newton Grim Show. I am the dude. And I am Grim. And we are very excited on this day to be discussing one of my personal favorites, Rage Against the Machine, Evil Empire. Yes, we most certainly are. But Grim, before we get into it, there might be some people out there who are new to this podcast. And probably not too many of you, but there might be a few. So we just want to let you know that this is the podcast where we pick some of our favorite albums, we discuss them, and we discuss each song on the album. Ain't that right, Grim? Yeah, uh, because we come from a time uh, pre-digital music, I guess digital in the sense of being delivered on a platform directly to your device, where we would purchase said music on, in our day, CD and nowadays vinyl. And what happens sometimes is that, you know, as you wear these out through the years, tracks get scratched and you get the tick, 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 or the needle jumps on the record. And so it started as a game between the two of us saying, okay, well, this is inevitably going to happen. But given some of our favorite albums, if you had to pick one that it was going to happen to, what's your scratch? And so here we sit. Yep. Exactly. And it doesn't mean we don't like the song. It doesn't mean it's a bad song. Absolutely. Absolutely. It is a song where you're like, oh, man, if I had to lose that one. If I had to lose. Yeah, that's the one that I I could live without. If I had to do it. Yep. Exactly. So. You get to play God for 45 minutes to an hour or an hour and a half. It's of a double disc. I mean, you know. yeah, I mean, yeah. All right. Getting into Evil Empire by Rage Against the Machine released April 16th, 1996. Now, initially, I was like, wow, 1996. For some reason, I had always pegged this album as coming out a little earlier th- than that. Oh, I didn't. I, I, for some reason, uh, I was thinking no? later. I, I don't know really? why, but I yeah, I was thinking later. But then when... When I read that, I, I I have distinct memories like of using my dad's like boombox tape CD player while we would play basketball <laughs> outside and listening to this album as we would like yep. play basketball or whatever in our in the neighborhood. And then thinking back on it now and like listening to how intense these songs are in the Your subject matter of it. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. They they really must so have Mr. been like, Zager. holy shit. They, what are they listening to out there? But yeah, as a, you know, at, at that age, what, 15, 15 for me, like I didn't. I didn't understand the gravity of of what they were talking about. I just thought it was no. like the most badass sounding band I had ever heard. Absolutely. Yeah, I'd never heard anything like it. Um hmm. because especially kind of coming off the heels of the the grunge rock era. And and that's why I guess when I started thinking about it, I was like, well, you know, think about 1996, I was like, you know, you talk about 90 92, 93, 94, kind of the maybe the golden age of, of grunge, right? Whereas when you have Evil Empire 96, it's it, it is a little sort of post that, like, you know. Well, yeah, and to me, this was the first instance of anyone mixing rap and rock. And not only was it the first instance, but to me, I don't think there will ever be a finer melding of those two things in Rage Against the Machine. I just, Absolutely. I can't think of any other instance where I've heard rap and rock mixed and where you've been like, damn, like, I don't know anyone who, who listened to this and was like, I don't like this. I mean, at that time, right. you, you were just like, this is the coolest shit I've ever heard. Yeah, it's just so unbelievably unique. Uh, oh, yeah. Definitely. And uh, see, now, I knew about Rage Against the Machine from from their first album. First and album. I'm not going to say that I got their first album when it came out, because that was 1992, and I would okay. have been 11 years old. So I actually heard about them through a friend, because um, uh, a neighborhood friend of ours from back in the day, I don't know if you remember Mr. Dusty Quishin, um, but he he had, uh, and it, another throwback, Tony Majeski, but he had like made some video with him, and Tony used um, Rage Against the Machine, uh, Killing in the Name, minus the Bruh. fuck you, I won't do what you tell me part over and over in this video. And I remember hearing that and been like, dude, 
who is that band? And so like several years later, probably about a year or so before Evil Empire came out, I bought their first album and I used to listen to it when I like did my paper out. <laughs> Which is funny, That's listening awesome. to all this like serious like oppression on you know lyrics <laughs> about oppression on people as I'm like doing a paper out. I mean, if that isn't the most fucking white bread thing that's ever been, I don't know what is. But dude, you're so white. you know, as I'm delivering the papers, I'm just like, yeah, dude, fuck you. I won't do what you tell me, but I will deliver yeah. your paper and collect the money at the end of each month. So exactly. So have your checkbooks ready, please. Yeah, cash, yeah, please. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I do I, accept I tips. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely 100 percent. well this to me and uh, i mean i know we talked a little bit i didn't find out too much about the production but brendan o'brien produced this album who has done i mean stp pearl jam he was uh he assisted um what's a red Rick hot Rubin on the red hot red chili yeah, peppers red chili. blood sugar sex magic so i mean he he was you know tutored by pretty much the living legend and Dude, he is a I, phenomenal producer himself. I, I would argue the most important producer of of 90s rock i, I mean sure. seriously 100%. if you could if you could like pin that many great albums in that decade to one guy i mean i i look forward to when we do producer spotlight and we can just do the list of the shit he's done because oh. it is phenomenal <laughs> it's a long list and, really you know, stuff. before we get into the long list, I would I think we should probably ask everyone, if you haven't already, to probably go ahead, um, you know, like, like subscribe and comment yeah. below. Yeah. Well, now that do we do that, that already, I feel like we didn't, you know, even if we did. No, we didn't. Okay. No, we, we gave the whole we gave the whole. Hey, what we're about speech. But yeah, I really okay. you snuck that in. It was it was pretty good. So, I do. Um, you know, I got to well, look out for us. What, one thing, future. there's a few things I'd like I'd like to talk about uh, the way of the future um, with just their music in general. Listening to them, and you've you've kind of cited this already, an extremely political band, right? Yeah. I mean, that's what really stands out. And I just feel like this day and age, and I got I sound like such an old person saying that musicians are not like this, at least in popular music. Rage Against the Machine. At the time that they were out, dude, they were on the radio. They were on MTV. Like this was, oh yeah, po- like like top ten popular music. Everybody listening to it. Everybody knew it. Everybody had this album. Everybody, you know, the album cover when you see it. Like, and we'll talk about that maybe in in a second. But I just feel like music today doesn't. It's I don't know if they could get away with it. Popular everything's music, everything's yeah, so I, everything's that's, so that's a good PC point. and so watered down. I don't know if point. you could get away with this album today on a major label. I, I really you don't. You'd piss somebody off, right? Oh <laughs> God, yes. I mean, you you piss somebody off by just telling them it's a beautiful day outside. How dare you? How, <laughs> how dare you? You don't even know what beauty. Yeah, okay, anyways. But um, it, it, it's interesting because now bands, you know, a lot of bands who sort of are political, you know, they they hold benefit events and benefit concerts, but there's not this this huge kind of uproar. There's not there's not like a band that I feel like in in popular music that people gravitate in and really just sort of speak to that. And and that's one thing that they they really really do. And I mean Rage is an extreme example of that, but still, I mean it's they're 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 really good at it. I just I just feel like people don't do that today. Yeah, but they they did stuff too. Like there was uh, there was like some sort of a benefit or something from Mumia, who's a, a gentleman who was like killed in in prison, uh, I believe. Mm-hmm. And and I mean they would they would like go to these events and play concerts probably for free just just because like it it was so much about what they were behind and what they believed. Sure. Well, didn't they like play a show right outside the Republican National Convention or something? I it believe it? so. Yeah. Yeah. So that was just kind of like, hey, fuck you. Well, that's that's pretty dope. Mm-hmm. Um, so one thing I like also, about them too is, and this is not necessarily on the political tangent or anything, um, but I think it's cool that since their inception, the four members of them have remained consistent. 
that is true. They they've gone off and done other projects. Yeah. And, oh, absolutely. And, and whatnot. But but Rage Against the Machine seems to it's, be it's, it's it has remained consistent. Machine. Like if you look them up, you're not going to see like this big past members list. Like the right. four of them had that chemistry, and and that's that's what they did, and it was awesome. Totally, and totally. I, dude, I just I never I had never heard, I, I will never forget listening to them the, for the first time, and I was like, I I just never heard anything as badass as this. Uh, uh, Absolutely. Well, and, and that to me sort of goes to, um, I mean, you talked to, you talked a little bit about the melding of genres of kind of, kind of the rap and the rock and everything. Yeah. Um, and talking about just, you know, their music being political, but a couple more things. I mean, one talking about, I, I think we should have to talk about, you know, Tom Morello is a guitarist. I, and I, I don't, I, it's on and, my and, list. And, Absolutely. Yeah, and, and I don't, I don't necessarily want to be like, ah, oh, he's, you know, this person's the greatest, this person's the best, anything, but, but one thing about him, and um, in a weird way, I sort of compare him. And recently, we just did an episode on the Mars Volta uh, with uh, Omar Rodriguez Lopez. They are two of the most unique guitar yes. players. Yes, that that is that is really what stood out to me. Um, when you listen to Tom Morell, I'm like, I- I'd never heard some of those sounds before. I just had never heard that. No, I, I had neither. And the thing is, is, if you listen to some of, okay, so Rage Against the Machine did a song on the Crow soundtrack. Um, I, I forget the, which the, one. The name is slipping away from me at the moment. But I, I think that if you didn't, if you didn't know a lot about Tom Morello as a guitarist and you just listened to Rage, you could you could sit there and say, okay, this is kind of a gimmick. Like, he just makes noises on his guitar. But the thing is, in that song in particular, I, I referenced that one because it's like almost kind of like jazz influence. And you hear it's how... Darkness. Dark, yeah, darkness. You hear how well he can play. Like... And, and that's just one example. I mean, he's got this other, um, another side project called the Night Watchman, and he's done a bunch of other stuff. I the You're guy is Audio a, Slave. Yeah. yeah oh, I mean. yeah. But I can't believe I didn't mention that one. Um, but yeah, yeah, the thing is, he can he can play the the quote unquote regular guitar very well. But what I think was so interesting about his approach in Rage Against the Machine is like it wasn't just a guitar. It was a synthesizer. It was a turntable. It was a sampler. I mean, he, he, that was part of that melding was what he did with the guitar where he, he brought it to the table as like, this isn't just six strings in an amplifier anymore. It can be like whatever I make it to be. Cause sure. I mean, I think of like the, to me, the breakout single or like the biggest single on that album is bulls on parade. I mean, you know, yeah. it has to be And there's that middle section where instead of doing a solo, mm-hmm. he's using the wah pedal and he's basically <laughs> making it sound like somebody scratching a record. I mean, that's totally, that is, the, I, 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 so I don't unique, think man, anyone had original. heard anything like that before. Nope. Nope. Well, and on a personal note, I think we should give a little shout out to our good friend and high school classmate, Miss Tatiana Shrutva, um, because mm-hmm. she used to work at House of Blues in Chicago and she would work the the backstage area and kind of cater to the artists and make sure they had everything they needed. And Tom Morello played a show at House of Blues. I remember her just telling me that she so she get to meet, you know, oh, Tom cool. Morello. She met J- Jay-Z and she said that Tom Morello was just really really good guy nice guy polite and everything which which is something you want to hear from you know artists that you kind of like and admire and everything yeah, like oh okay cool. these guys aren't aren't just assholes or something like that like actually like a like a good dude so that's fine um, i actually but, ran into her at the doctor's office like a few months ago yeah so Tommy, <laughs> hope you're listening to this yeah, yeah. um now uh, another thing with this album if you want to talk about um uh, uh you know the lyrics and everything um you know, Zach De La Rocha, unbelievably well-read person. Oh, like, yeah. I mean, the, the references and the things you that... You talk about the that, list of that, books? That, no, I'm not. But oh. there is a long list of books. I mean, because it's so long. But not only not only his, his um, you know, being well-read, 
um, about, you know, different things, but it just just the events throughout history that that he takes from and spits into his lyrics yeah, yeah, and yeah. songs. And it's just, um, you know, we're going to go through each one of these tracks so we're going to talk about a lot of stuff. And I'm sure a lot of the lyrics are going to come up. It would be impossible for us to talk about and reference like oh, yeah. each one of the events and things that he he talks about. So if if any of you out there have sort of insight or thoughts on the things that he references, please add on to what we have to say, because it is just unbelievably in depth kind of what what he talks about raps about sings about it's uh it's very very cool yeah now um i don't know what you want to go into first whether it's the production or the cover uh Uh, let's do production first and then go into the cover so one thing about the production that i read about which was incredibly unique was They had a rehearsal space that they used. And when it came time to record this, the decision of the band was that instead of paying all this money to go into a studio to try to recapture what they had, they decided instead to go to the rehearsal space and punch a hole in the wall and run cables and mics into their rehearsal space and then that's what Brendan O'Brien took to the board and recorded the album like in their rehearsal space. So with the exception of, I think, the vocals on one or two tracks, like they did this in their rehearsal space and that's how they recorded it. That's crazy. It is, but it, it's awesome to me it because sounds- they they knew they had this they they had this sound that you you know you just couldn't really easily pigeonhole and reproduce. And I think that was that's so cool that that's how they did it because that's uh that's that's really something. Dude, totally, man. I'm 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 impressed by that. I'm really mm-hmm. impressed by that. Well, I think maybe moving on to the cover. This, to me, is one of the most recognizable covers. I mean, you know, there, there are a few covers. You know, we'll always talk about Dark Side and Sgt. Pepper. But, uh, you know, obviously Nirvana's Nevermind. But from sort of like this 90s era. Yeah. This cover. That's it. Uh, might, might be other than Nirvana's Nevermind. Is it the most recognizable cover? Because it is to me, man. Yeah, I, I mean that that guy who I guess is an actual like it's a it's a it's comic bit, book crap from Crime Buster. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but but they just changed the probably the C to an E for Evil Empire, and mm-hmm. and I also like that Evil Empire is is a kind of a play on yeah. the term that Ronald Reagan used to use to describe the Soviet Union in the 1980s during the Cold War. Which, I, according uh, to an interview I saw some with De La Rocha, he said that could have easily, just as easily been used to describe the United States. Uh, yeah, I'm sure because that's exactly how they're describing us. It's funny when you yeah. put yourself yeah. in someone else's shoes, they probably think the exact same thing. So mm-hmm. um, the shoe fits wear it. Well, Grim, I think it's about time that we uh, get into the tracks here. What do you say? Yeah, I think that's fine because anything oh. else that I have to discuss, I think, um, actually goes with the tracks as as opposed to a an aside, if you will. Oh, and I and you will. will. So, <laughs> track number one, track number one, "People of the Sun," second single from the album. Yeah, um, I, I like. I, I always I thought this was a good way to start it. It almost sounds as if the string is being like somewhere of a mixture between scratched with a pick and like bowed to get yeah. that sound. Um, sure. But do you know what this song is about? Uh, I I don't know what it's about. I mean, I, I know there are references to things, but well, overall, it's, a, it's about. I, can... I believe this and and maybe uh, another couple of them are about the Zapatista Rebellion in Mexico, which was like a group of farmers um, who rose up against what they felt was a really oppressive government. Now, when we were in high school, um, I went on a trip to Oaxaca. Uh, which is in Mexico and Oaxaca neighbors, the state of Chiapas and Chiapas is where this was taking place. And I remember in Oaxaca, when we went into the town square, there was like a booth set up 
that were representatives of the Zapatista rebels and were like selling like merchandise and stuff to raise money for the Zapatistas. Fun. And I don't remember if you if you remember that shirt that Stoffer used to wear when we played him more that had the guy going like this and it I said so. and it said Yabasta, which basically translates into enough already. Which Sweet. that that I, like I that. bought that I shirt. Like that. Ah. I bought that shirt from the Zapatista like rebel um representatives because I thought it was Sweet, cool man. that like they were they were, you know, in support of that and it was it was interesting. And that was the first I'd ever heard of that movement, but it wasn't until like being older that I read back and I and really understood and you, what it meant. Because I, sure. I believe that they were really rebelling against the ruling party at the time, I believe was called the PRI. And and okay. that was what they felt was like an incredibly oppressive and um you know corrupt government. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. So there you go. Awesome. For all those those of you scoring at home, score one for Grim. <laughs> I hope. All right. You got to right. get one somewhere, dude. That's awesome. Well, it, it's it's a it's a cool way to start the album because it kind of oh it, it is. I mean, just the uh, the it starts off with the little drum that and he's mm-hmm. all people come up and and then it, it you know it doesn't hit right as hard right away. So I feel like it's sort of like this little warm up and then it yeah, really gets into it. it. Yeah, yeah. Well, then we move on to track number two, "Bulls on Parade." And um, I mean, dude, this song, I mean, you talked about sort of that, uh, I guess the, I don't, you want to call it a solo? I don't, I don't know what you, I, I guess yeah, it's but a it, solo it was, or, it was basically, it was like a record scratch, but it was done on the guitar and that, that was what was done in place of your standard guitar solo, which is cool. Right. Right. And well, we saw I mean, the video a, on MTV. How many times? I mean, a, a billion. Yeah. Yeah. So well, I mean, it says they're talking about that. It was done by toggling two pickups, one on and one off, while rubbing his hands on the strings over the pickups. Oh, that's yeah, kinda, dude, you can hear some of that. You can hear similar. Now, he doesn't, Jimi Hendrix wouldn't rub his hands, but you can hear the the um, the pickup switch because if you do it, it can kind of act like a wah pedal, you know, where it changes like the kind of the, the sound frequency range that you're hearing from like low to high um mm-hmm. you can hear hendrix do that in like the in, in band of gypsies a lot you can hear him kind of toggling the pickup switch and making that sure. sound but he doesn't do it with the like the scratching thing i thought he did that with a wah but that's interesting that he does it just with the pickup selector hmm. but it does the same thing but the pickup selector like the thing with a wah is it 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 like it it's like a fader you know, okay. it, it goes in and out where a pickup selector, depending on how many different positions it has, is, is basically like on and off. I got but you. It, but yeah, it can still sure. give you that effect. And, and in fact, that could give you a more percussive effect because you don't have that that sweep. Right. It's it's just, right. 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 You know, it's 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 more it's choppy. It doesn't flow. Yeah. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That's that's gotcha. exactly it. Now. Gotcha. One thing about Bulls on Parade, now the the video was very political and we saw that a bunch of times. Now, one Shocker. thing I did not know until reading about this album was that they performed on Saturday Night Live in 1996. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. So, the first song that they performed on the show was Bulls on Parade, right? And one of the sure. things that they did is when they performed on their amps, like the big speaker cabinets of their amps, they had American flags draped over them that were upside down. Right down. And the producers asked them to remove those when they performed. And they did not remove them. They came out when it was their when it was their time to perform. And they performed Bulls on Parade and they had the flags upside down. That Damn. would mark the last performance that they would ever do on SNL. In fact, they were banned for life from performing on that show because they refused to do that. And I think after the performance, like they, they didn't like hang around and party with the cast. They just like got the fuck out of there. So I would say 
I understand all the political things, but given all that, I would still have to throw down a big fat What the fuck is that shit? For that thing to SNL. Mark it. Awesome. Well, I think uh, we can probably move on to Vietnam, Mr. Grimm. What do you say? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I thought it was cool, you know, the a lot of the, the lyrics... Um, uh, in case you guys don't know, the uh, uh, Rage Against the Machine, they, they they lean a little more liberal, right? Um, Typically, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> a little more to the left. Um, but, you know, the lyrics to this song are, you know, kind of shots at the, uh, you could say the, the, the right wing, right wing uh, AM radio shows, people like the the late, not so great Rush Limbaugh. Oh, um, Sean Hannity's, and, all those uh, fucking dickheads. Yeah. Yeah. So. Tell us how you really. And feel. I didn't, dude, uh, I didn't know that. It, it like, I didn't really know that until I read about this and then it all made sense. And you do tear yeah. is the product you push. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, you absolutely. know, dude. Now, did you pick up on this or read about this or know this? The riff, the verse riff bears a striking, striking resemblance to the wanton song by oh Led dude Zeppelin. yeah it's not only there's there's a lot of things like, that bears a striking resemblance uh, to um i and in, i didn't make the connection oh until i did I read dude, it, it's, and then i listened to it and i was like oh my god yeah to it's me it's basically great. like holding on f sharp and, and kind of dropping it out to e like dude i actually the song that i'm going to put in the music bed for this is one of my own songs that i was very much influenced by this plug it Okay, cool. So, yeah, I mean, they, yeah, that riff is wonderful. Dude, and I mean, but it, yeah, it, it, some of the dude, some of the lyrics in this song that I know we can say, OK, this song is Vietnam. But if you say the words uh, turn on the radio and now fuck it, turn it off. Like, that's what most like. I think a lot of people probably thought that was the name of this song was like, I know, you know, turn on, turn on the radio or, you know, know. whatever. You know, fear is your only God on the dude, radio. What is it? Oh. Your uh, your savior's my guillotine. I mean, <laughs> like there's dude. there's really there's some great stuff. Dude, in there. I'm a Turetic. Oh shit, I got a head rush. Yeah. I mean, dude, so many just lines that that really stick out, and that's what's cool. That's what not only makes a good song, but it makes a good band. And when when there's these specific lyrics that always stick out to you, um, I just I just think are are, are pretty great. And he has another one coming out like bats from Stacy Coonan, which. I had to read about, but I guess that is a reference to a specific instance where a police officer beat the shit out of somebody with a baton. Uh, yeah, I think it was Rodney King. Oh, stay, th- oh that was that one? Yeah, oh, specifically? Was, oh, damn. I, I had sure read about Rodney this a King. while ago. Yeah, and I think of the, I forget how many officers were maybe charged i think only two were convicted i think he might have been one of them now mm. i could be not 100 percent correct on that and i'm sure plenty of people will correct me if i'm wrong but i'm pretty sure i read that wow so all right track number four revolver the song by rage against the machine not the album by the beatles song number correct four. now i i i never really and, and granted i i could have probably dug a little more but i've never really totally understood what this one is about so for me, the way I interpret it and when I look at the lyric, the lyrics, you know, hey, revolver, don't mothers make good fathers. The way I I mean, you could say you know, revolver if you want to talk about a gun or anything like that. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. To, to me, it was more about, you know, mothers raising their children, supporting them because there is no father now. Oh, uh, OK. OK. Of, and and know, the cycle. The cycle goes on and on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that yeah, actually that's, makes sense. That that's kind of what I got because because that's sort of the 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 lyrics that really stand out in in this. Yeah. Song. So that's 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 kind of what I what I took from it. Yeah. No, I like that. I like that. And and I think this is interesting too because this is the first spot in the album where musically it slows down at all. It it does, yeah, it definitely does. Because otherwise, and I, and I dude, think it's, it's a really good wall. instance of them, like you know, being able to slow down and, and kind of bring it back and forth, and really, you know what I mean? It, it's it's yeah, cool I'm, like that. 
Totally. And I love it with the when a band and, and you know, again, going back to a previous album we did, uh De Lost in the Comatorium by Mars Volta, you know, bands that that have the ability to kind of raise it up and raise it down like that, especially bands like like these that are just so in your face and intense when they sometimes dude you're listening to an album like man dude i need to fucking i, I need to take a breath here right yeah like, this yeah, is, yeah it's it's just you know let's let's chill for a second so mm-hmm. um but uh yeah i think we can move on to track number five snake charmer what do you say dude interested in you interested in you interested interested in you dude that's pretty cool man and i love the way at the end you. The, the the way at the end of the song uh how how it kind of falls apart in the way yeah he sings it two, two different ways and they kind of slowly cross over each other right it's it, it goes from being a scream to at the end being spoken mm-hmm. uh, i just mm-hmm. think that I, I i think that's that's pretty cool dude and you're gonna make it where to a sanctuary that's a fragile american hell in I hell think. an empty dream uh, a selfish horrific vision Vision. Yeah, oh. I. You know what? One one thing I do want to know. I love looking, actually looking at the lyrics. How many times it says "interested in you"? It just <laughs> it's so good. I want to know what that sweet, indulgent fluid is that he's re- that he's referencing. Oh, green. Oh, yeah. So oh, green. Oh, yeah. Mm, I could guess. Could be a variety. Oh, of uh, oh, sorry. Oh, greed. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. See, and that's the thing. In in your mind, like as listening to this album as a kid, like you wouldn't think that it's oh greed. Oh yeah. Oh greed. Oh yes. Interesting. Then you make that makes you make sense. up words. You make up words. Yep. Well, Graham, I'm kind of tired. Yeah. Track number six. Tired. Tire me. Um, they won a Grammy for this one, dude. So. That this is one of the most interesting songs because the song never had a music video. It's yeah. never released on any media formats, no radio airplay. And yet it won a Grammy in 1997 for best metal performance. Yeah. Like that. I mean, I, I just, I don't even know how that happens. I, how, how does that happen? That's, I mean, it's very cool. It's crazy. Um, I just yeah I just I just don't know. It's it's really I've always I I was always interested in that part where he's like I want to be Jackie Onassis I want to wear a pair of dark sunglasses. sunglasses. (laughs) Yeah, that is just it was just a weird little like to throw that in in the middle of it. It is, and then then he's like, oh 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 oh, please don't die. You know, it's a little. The one thing I I like is um, what he says in the first time he goes. Yeah, we're all gonna. No, we're already dead. Like, it, like he's gonna say we're all gonna die, but then he's like, we're already dead. No, like that too is late. awesome. Too yeah. late. All right. Track number seven. This down Rodeo. This oh, might be my my favorite yes. Rage Against the Machine song ever. I, I just, yeah. Pfft. This or Vietnam. Uh, to me, it's I. I could never okay. decide between the two of them. But it's oh. yeah, this one or Vietnam. I this mean, one, it's the. the the intro, I just oh, oh, I know. And then, and then once so they good, get man. into it, he really has he gets his guitar to sound like a synth. Hmm. You know, and, and it's it's so it's it, it's so so fucking cool. These people ain't seen a brown skin man since their grandparents oh, bought one. I mean, bought one. Fuck yes, dude. And dude, dude, it's rolling just down the Rodeo imagery with a shotgun. shotgun. Yeah, that imagery itself is amazing. Dude, can't waste a day when the night brings the hearse. So make a move and plead the fifth because you can't, you can't plead, plead, the plead the first. first. And I like it where he says, uh, funk the track, my verbs f- sly like the family stone. That is a fucking sweet reference right there. Just yeah. sly. Yep. Dude, I also love when the there's that sort of part right at the end or within the last 30 seconds, the guitar really just like chills out at the end of the song. Yeah. It's, just, it's, just, it's, it's so, again... Very Dude, what about the Bob Marley really reference? reference? We hungry, oh, but yeah. them belly full. Them belly I mean, full. that that's yeah. also sweet. Oh. Yeah, but it's it, I like how it's a backwards reference, right? You yeah, yeah, yeah. Belly full, but we hungry. Yeah, we yeah. Hungry, but them belly full. So it's I kind of like that little play on words. It's it's pretty neat. Um, track number eight without a now face. I believe without a face is also about 
the Zapatistas, I, I believe, because because this okay. is like the the faceless people that are just being oppressed. And some of the lines in here that I think are <laughs> are amazing, dude. Like, cause I jack for Similac, fuck a Cadillac, dude. Similac, that that's yeah. formula. That's that's baby uh, formula. Okay. Like that's that's amazing. Like, and it's and then the next ly- the next lyric is survive. One motive, no hope. Like that's that's heavy, man. Yeah, boy, heavy. What was the other? I wanted well, to I wanted to read that one line where he goes. Um, it must be in Down Rodeo, but I still, even though we've we've done Down Rodeo, I still want to read that one line. Um, what is it, dude? What he it? where he says. Um, a thousand years, they had the tools. We should be taking them. Fuck the G ride. I want the machines that are making them. I always thought that was a cool lyric. Like he doesn't want the car; he wants the fucking machines Shit. to make the car. Like that's <sighs> that welcome that line son. struck me. Like as a yeah, welcome to the machine. That struck me as a kid. I remember even hearing that. Like you know, I I was like, I don't fully understand what this is about here, but this is amazing. Well, the idea of that is really kind of cool the the machines that make the yeah. machines right yeah well yeah exactly That's, yeah i don't i don't want the product i want the machines that make the product so i yeah mm-hmm. so now anyways and i apologize for that but i i did want to talk about that lyric because it always got me but back to the song at hand definitely Without about the the zapatistas because he talks about like farming a lot in here where he says my ease was all we needed to sustain which is corn uh, uh, yeah. Now our golden skin burns and pesticide rain you down with DDT. Yeah, you know oh, me. Sh- I'm raped for the grapes. Uh, Profit rem- for oh, the bourgeoisie. Like that's damn, dude. It's intense shit right there. It well, is. Mo- stepping away from the the lyrics for a second. One, I love the bass in this song. Oh it really yeah, stands out. It gets they get real funky, like which yeah. is which is kind of cool. And dude, again, Tom Morello's guitar parts. I love wh- one thing he does, and he does it in selective areas. But he makes it sound almost like a drill. I know. You know I know. You know. And you're just like, whoa, dude, yeah, that's I, fucking cool, man. And he's that's like, why I'm like saying Eddie Van Halen, where he's. Pull yeah. out the drill. <laughs> yeah, it's like, dude, it, it's a sampler, it's a synth, it's it's like everything, man. Track number nine, Wind Below. Don't you know? Yeah, uh, and, and this is interesting because I think this is talking about sort of like the trade, like like bigger like global trade. Because he specifically totally mentions NAFTA coming with a new disaster in this uh-huh. one. And and dude, um, what does he say? The devil's mouth dry. Now Mexico burns. Um, so here they come one by one. Them killers of the new frontier occupy cause and fear. Come on. I mean, hmm. what well, talks about, dude. Uh, yeah. All the shareholders going to flex and, and Oh yeah. Annex, at the end. The yeah. Truth. And then in GE going to flex and try to annex the in truth. Disney. NBC, yeah. You mentioned NBC, Disney, ABC, Disney, ABC. Yeah. ABC. Come on, what about Fox, man? Come on, he's he's uh, yeah, so left wing, bro. Throwing well, Fox. I don't, yeah, I don't think Fox was really that big then. They no. were still, yeah. Actually, dude, I don't even know. I mean, you could say he's left wing. I don't. He, he's his own wing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, true. He's, dude, Zach is up. That's where he is. He's not left. He's not right. He's up. So. Yeah. All right, let's roll right, Graham. Oh, roll right. Roll call. Roll call. Um, dude, intro has a really, really cool riff. Mm-hmm. Um, again, again, I, you know, how he does them a whole bunch of different ways. Dude, mainline but, adrenaline, uh, sorry, mainline adrenaline. adrenaline, Gaza to Tiananmen. I mean, that's an interesting, like, you know, cause all the, all the controversy that's, that's happened at like the, the Gaza strip and everything with like Israel, you know, that whole area. And then to take it to Tiananmen square. You know, because that's the imagery of like the tank coming at right, that guy, yeah. and he keeps. I mean, oh, that's dude, dude, really interesting. Amazing really interesting. Images. Yeah. Well, some of the lyrics, you know, here comes the hand on leashes, the cross, the capital, the pale families, the fear and the mouth in their mouthpiece. Yeah. Oh, but my, and, you know, and as, as amazing as the the lyrics are, um, 
Dude, I love the end part. Send them to the seventh level, like where they get into that different riff for their lives and my lives were never settled. Like, oh, and in the way they end it, like, send them to, oh, dude, it's like, this was one of these albums, like, you know how some albums that we've done, we've we've known throughout our lives, and you you listen to them and you're like, oh man, that's a good album. Like it was good to <laughs> to revisit it. This is one where I'm like listening to it and I'm just like, you know, if I'm in my car, if I'm running, I'm like yelling it at this point, like send them to <laughs> you know. Oh man, it's like it's so good, so good. Dude, it is, it is, man. All right, Grim. You're the boomerang. The last this, one. And when it's all going to come back, it's all going to come kind of back. An, dude, kind of an interesting song because it was actually released in 94 for the Higher Learning soundtrack. I don't know if you remember that movie. I um, do. It was that John Hughes? Am I? Uh, I don't know if John Hughes did it, but I think. No, Tyra not John Banks Hughes. John Singleton, right? John Singleton. God, that, yeah. Oh, my God. That was John's. embarrassing. I'm sorry. Um, that was really dumb. Yeah. Um, but dude, so th- there are different versions like, of it. So in the higher learning version, there's like more of a prominent bass, has more of a hip hop feel. And then Evil Empire, the the guitars and are are kind of mixed in. They're a little heavier. And boy, the so. sound on that guitar that he gets at, yeah. you know, yeah. And and I didn't go back and listen to the higher learning version. It would be very. Interesting I didn't to, either to, because this to, is to the one that yeah. compare them. Yeah. Um, I mean, I saw that movie, I think, once, and um, it, it was a long time ago. Well, yeah. 1994, probably, when 95 when it came out. But, um, but yeah, I don't know. I I, I kind of li- like the beginning of this song where the, I don't know if it sounds like, is it like finger picking or something? He's doing something interesting. I don't know it's, what it's, exactly he's doing. And, and yeah. that's what I, what I kind of like about some of these guitar parts, especially looking back on it now as a guitar player and being like th- thinking to myself, what an interesting approach it is. There are some things where he's doing and I can envision what he's doing to make that sound. The beginning sure. of this song, I no fucking clue. I'd actually yeah. need to like watch live video to see. Yeah. So if anybody out there knows or has theories, yeah, please let please. us know. Comment below. Um, yeah, dude. It, and then, you know, the song ends kind of, it, it's really weird. It just kind of has this weird sort of crazy ending and then it just kind of cuts. Very sort of not, I, I'd never heard them end a song like that before yeah. or anything. It just kind of kind of deconstructs. It's, it's really weird. You know what I like um, is because this is all talking about like kind of, kind of his like uh, a lot of like beliefs philosophies dude it's dark now and dark out and i'm screaming what from within dude pff. fuck man enslaved by intense. dogma talk about my birthrights like yeah they like you said earlier some of, some of his lyrics are just like man dude, they're um, grim, grim they're a middle they're, finger they're, and a fist at the same time i hope and and if somebody out there knows this th- out there, there are universities that have interesting classes. There should be a college class or course just kind of examining and deconstructing his lyrics. Yeah. You know, there, there are some really, I mean, you hear about some universities and stuff where they have like, oh, like, isn't there one that, I don't know, it talks about Radiohead or it's like, you know, certain music classes and stuff where it's like focused on one thing. Like, there should be a writing class. And I don't even know if it would fall. We, dude, Within music, I don't even know if it'd be a writing class. It could be like a history class or something. Just talking about and examining Zach De La Rocha's lyrics, uh, because he has some phenomenal lyrics. Um, it, it's 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 just they're so honest. I know. Uh, and so and factual. I feel too. So, God, I'm um, so embarrassed about the John Hughes John Singles thing. Jesus, it's okay. <laughs> Life goes on. The six people watching this will forgive you. Um, so yeah, Graham, at every turn, I'm should. running into Hell's Gates. Yeah, absolutely. So, Graham, time to scratch. I feel like hold on. I feel like with this album, we okay. Hold on, before we scratch, dude. Oh. What's your favorite? Oh, Downward Ale. Easy. Not okay. even close. Downward okay. Ale. Downward Ale twice before any other song in this album. Like, I just, wow. It's to me, it, it, it it's my favorite rage song 
Dude, I just, like I said earlier, I, I cannot personally um, come up with a favorite between Down Rodeo and Vietnam. I, I just, okay. and like each one of those songs, if I'm listening to the album in a digital format, I will rewind it to listen to each like, one of those again. Man, it's, it's like a double unscratch. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah, that's pretty dope. All right, now we know the favorites. <clears throat> Time to scratch. For this man, I don't know what are we going to scratch with. Pull out like a sledgehammer or something. I mean, geez, dude, it's a. Uh, this is a intense. I don't know. Probably one. an ice pick right to the heart, man. Yeah, yeah. Or, or a could, pen. You know, a pen because or, the lyrics or, are so well written. Or fucking a shotgun while we're rolling down Rodeo. <laughs> yeah, you just got to aim it so you get the bird shot at the right track. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, okay. All right, fair enough. Um, you go, I go. Who goes? I feel like I'm going to put you on the tee. I feel like I scratched right, the Mars Volta first. All right, that's fine. Cool. So this one might be a little controversial. Bulls, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> um, unfortunately, I hate to do this, but I'm going to steal and take away a Grammy from Rage Against the Machine, and I'm going to scratch Tire Me. So I don't know if I get a W. Are we going to overtime? Yo, we, we are going to overtime, dude. Oh, um, shit. Okay. And damn, and I will say this. I don't like, have a backup. <laughs> I don't either. Like, dude, all these albums are really good albums, and they are hard to scratch. And there's, you know, the thing is, with Tire Me, it's the beginning of the song. That I can that that makes me scratch it. Like once it gets into and it does the well, we're all gonna we're already dead. Like I'm I'm into it at that point. But the beginning for some reason the beginning I I thought the same thing. Yeah, I think I think for me I I think for me is well one I already said that downward day is my favorite song right yeah so, so you're not scratching I could, an asshole if you scratch I could dude I could easily go from Snake Charmer interested. You interested mm-hmm. you right into you know oh mm-hmm. man I could easily make that ju- in fact I've made that jump many a times yeah yeah um so I think that's why I would go with that now if I had to go with a if B we're going yeah we're going to OT yeah. we're going to Islanders Capitals here I would probably go uh, probably with wind below. Over, over, over time. Did we? Are we triple over to? No, we're not going to triple. But that's that's what it would go. It's time to go. No, just kidding. Holy son of a bitch! I, I mean, I, dude, that's that's exactly what I would do too. This is not prearranged, by the way. No, we, we, no, it know. isn't. I, I kind of, I saw tire me as a possibility, but for you to yeah, go I win below, I mean, oh man, and I can't throw you a WTFITS because it's like I thought the same thing. Um, it's all right. I don't. Dude, we can ride in, fade out. It's 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 good, man. You don't you don't need to. Pick something else. Like if that's yeah. your scratch, that's just your scratch. And we're just, you know, we don't go into triple overtime because no, we don't. Then albums then albums become EPs, and that's not what we're about. That's, here. Yeah, that's so, not what we're here for. And about. granted, so, we wouldn't want to scratch either of these given the choice. But it, no. if it was a, you know, if Since there was a gun to our half. head, yeah. Well, shit, dude, we haven't done this in a while. I mean, that's that's two OTs. Um, but I, I can't yeah. disagree with your logic on either one. Like those are just the ones. Like if I had to do it, yep. Because well, I was I was thinking it was either that or it was it was roll right, right. But dude, then you yeah. get into that send him to the seventh level. Sorry, that is not going anywhere. Like that's that too awesome. Yeah, yeah. So. Yep. Well. The Islanders win the series and the game. And the game. Holy the game. shit balls. So, what a what a country. 
All right, everyone. Well, please let us know your scratch below. We'd love to hear it. We know it's not easy, but it's not yeah, supposed to be. Yeah, let us know the wind below. Yeah, I would love to know everyone's scratches on this. Now, also let us know, like, what's your favorite Rage album? Is it this one? Maybe uh, the f- debut? Maybe a little uh, Battle of Los Angeles? Dude, Battle talking of LA like, is nothing to yeah. shake a stick at either. And we are not talking about the Los Angeles Lakers versus the Los Angeles Clippers either. So No siree. All right, Graham, I think it's uh, time to let them go, and uh, it's time for us to go. What do you say? I think so, too, dude. It was, a, go. it was a good day. It was a good album. Dude, and you know what? I listen to this album, like, regardless of whether we're prepping for the show. Like, sometimes this just comes up because it's just so goddamn good. All right, Graham. So. Time to go. Dude, dude Graham show. show. Interested. Interested, interested in you. Interested in you. Interested in you. Interested. Interested. Scratch a track is produced by the Dude and Grim. Additional music provided by Moore and the Tims. Copyright 2021. The Dude and Grim Show.